everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the class, everyone. I'm your teacher, Ankita, and welcome to the class. Hi, Natasha. Hi, all rounder. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Zarina. Oh, yeah, yeah, you are coming to a class after a long time. Hi, Vansh. Good evening. Hi, Devdas. You have a maths class. I understand. <laughs> awesome. So, how are you all? How are you feeling today? Hi. Ashwara ma'am is here. Good, good. Very good. Hi, Tripti. Sarukha. Nikita. Good evening. Mamta, you're just right on time. Yes, yes, Arina, yes. Good evening, everyone. I can see many of you have joined us. Awesome. So, how are you feeling? I hope that all of you are in a good health and are really very excited to learn about the connective tissue. Yes? Very good, everyone. Hi, Rekha. Good evening, all-rounder. Nikita, oh, thank you for telling me. Everything is visible and audible. Yeah, this pen will not work over here. I think I need to change it to some dark color. Da, da, da. Yeah. Yes. I'm good, Vansh. Thank you for asking. Very good, everyone. So let's let's quickly start our class. Hi, Tanishka. Good evening. Without wasting any of our time, right? It's really very important. It's a very important topic. And this slide might be a little bit lengthy because it's a very, very important and very huge topic. But we'll make sure to finish this topic, right? So I want all of you to focus in class, right? It's really very important for all of us to focus in class, right? Yeah, I got a signal that at 5, we have a class over here. So we need to wind up really, very quickly. Awesome. So all of you are focused. Hi, Shivan. Hi, Bala. Hi, Natasha, Rashmi, Tamanna. Great. So let's quickly start, everyone. I know that you saw this amazing video about the Anthe. And this exam is approaching all of us, right? It's free of cost. Please do not hesitate in registering yourself, right? It will give us a chance to actually go to NASA. Of course, it offers us lots more than not just the scholarship. But of course, uh, different types of cash rewards also. And our midterm series is going on, right? We're trying our best so that all of you will is in your term examination, midterm examination. So we are kind of very excited for that, right? We have these amazing sessions happening. And of course, connective tissue is also a part of it. Yes, good evening, Ansh, Divyanshu, Bisar, Vansh, all the best. Very good, Shivansh, uh, Shivansh. Anshu, awesome. Hi. Okay. And of course, please do use the code YT free. Okay, tell me how many of you have used the YT free code? Sorry, YT first code. Not uh, my bad. YT first. So first thousand, right, users will be able to avail the classes which are there, right? And those in the mini learning program. So we have Baiju's mini learning program where, of course, we have a bunch of our sessions together, right? So if you, uh, uh, if you use the code YT first, you will be able to avail these classes for, for, for some duration and you will, you will be able to explore it, right? Nice. And I hope that all of you have joined the Telegram group, right? Awesome, everyone. Now with that, let's quickly start our session. Yes. Shivan, you can use the YT uh, first now. That's very good, Dev Das. I hope that you will do good. Divyanshu and Mona Lisha, we will come up with that really very soon, right? Just building up more to the surprise. Awesome. So in today's class, we will be discussing about the connective tissue, right? We'll be discussing about the loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue, and the fluid connective tissue. Very good. Yes, that's nice. Awesome, everyone. So, are we ready? Yes. Awesome. So, are we ready? Everyone, quickly give me a thumbs up and we will start. Yes. I hope that all of you are doing good. And, yes, let's just see the last week question. Yes. 
nice thank you okay everyone so the last week we discussed about the epithelial tissue right and uh, this time we'll be talking about the tissues right so if you are new to our class please you can watch the videos that we did on plant tissues as of now and last week we we discussed about the epithelial tissue so let's get started right yes um henro i will try uh, to speak in hindi but as majority of us are here right we uh, prefer english as a medium of our learning so i'm kind of bound to talk in english uh sorry i'll not be able to talk and teach in um, you know teach in hindi okay just give me one moment everyone we have the epithelial tissue i'm just looking for the video and i got one and here are to the students so yeah i think we didn't had any question back then yes awesome so let's get uh, let's get started everyone and uh, i hope that you have your pen your notebook so that you can note on all the important points and with that let's start our class awesome so now we're talking about the connective tissue we as a name so just connective right now it, it will be connecting right so we have these bricks that will actually comes together if you apply the cement on it it basically help in connecting it right so over here we have the similar things that we know that connective tissue will be doing so they joins basically different uh blocks to build a whole building so similarly of course we have the tissue that will be joining together and that will be giving us the session uh, a whole structure are we clear everyone hi ajit good evening rashmi yes no ma ma muscle tissue will be doing uh, the next week yes we will be having the anthe session for sure divyanshu we will do that but in today's class we'll be focusing on the uh, learning of the connective tissue okay natasha is saying that we i do i can do a little bit of english we'll see yes uh, devdas we will have a one shot we already had a one shot right Yes, Dave. Thus, we had it already. The one shot of life, uh, fundamental unit of life. Uh, once you can check the timing of the classes on the basically on the community post. Awesome. So everyone, now I can see there are, there was a little bit of disturbance in the class, but I hope that all of you are kind of on the same page now. Yes. Okay, everyone. We have the playlist, so you can definitely check it out. awesome so let's get started everyone we have as of now completed the epithelial tissue we are discussing the uh, annual tissues we are done with the epithelial epithelial tissue but now we are discussing about the connective tissue we will be having a sessions where you will be learning about the muscular tissue and the nervous tissue so let's get started with the connective tissue and when we talk about the connective tissue right can you tell me what do you think when we when you hear the term connective tissue i need just to change the height of the table one minute everyone yes now a little bit of in my comfort yes op prince official please don't spam i can't speak marathi yes very good blood is the best example for the um yeah blood is the example it connects something connected joining very good lavanya disha Arishri, Lavanya, very good joining. Krishna, Sai, the Vyansha connecting something. Yeah, very good, right? It's a very easy thing for us to understand. Connective tissues, of course, it will be connecting. It has a matrix cells and of course the fibers. When we talk about the important characteristic features, everyone, I want you to take the screenshot of these slides, right? You will be getting all of these in the Telegram group also, but I would encourage you to take the. screenshot so that you can remember and you can quickly recall them so we here we have the important characteristic features of the connective tissues that are loosely packed they're not very dense together they're not very tightly packed there is a lot of intercellular space between them then of course they're embedded in the intercellular matrix now a very important thing many of you will be asking what is a matrix over so here we have right matrix is basically nothing but a ground or a non living medium or a substance of the tissue that occupies the vacant space between the cells are we clear 
Yes, are we clear everyone? Okay, technical sir, very good, but I would request you not to spam. Okay, very good. Now, of course, I hope that matrix is clear to you. And of course, matrix differs from different types of tissues that we have. So that's the main characteristic features of the connective tissue. Now, when we talk in terms of the function, over here we have, they basically help in joining the R or binding the various tissues and the organs. They provide the rigidity and the protection, right? And, some, and sometimes it provides the flexibility also. Yeah, we have lots of connective tissue that we'll be discussing, right? That will be giving us, uh, that we will be uh, learning over here, right? So can you explain matrix in Hindi? So if you go back, right, just see this definition. Matrix is a ground or a non-living substance or a medium. So let's suppose if this room, right, has a, basically this room has nothing if you compare, right? A kind of a fluid medium or a medium right that will be occupying any space so for example if i say okay yeah everyone can you see over here there are two remotes in my hand i hope these are visible yes or no so for example i'm sure there will be a little bit space between it right that space of course that space can be easily filled with the matrix which is nothing but the medium or a substance any substance would say just remember it's a kind of a fluidy substance right uh, not exactly fluid, but a substance that will be filling up this space, right? So, similarly, in our body also, we have a lot of spaces, right? Between the tissues, between a lot of organs that we have, right? So, between that space or the empty space, what we have is a matrix. Are we clear? Yes. We will not call it as a tissue, Divyanshu. It is a part of a tissue, but let's not the tissue per se. Uh, Shivansh, uh, we will be discussing about limbs after some time. Yes, oh, awesome. Okay, now I can see many of you have got the idea of the connective tissue. So, here we are. Now, broadly, we can differentiate the connective tissue under three categories. So, we have loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue, and the fluid connective tissue. Three types are there. Dense, loose, and fluid. Now, by looking at the names only, we can easily understand that what we'll be learning in that. Uh, Krish, it's, these are not the blood vessels. Anshu, a similar thing. Not exactly that fluid, right? But a fully substance. Very good. Awesome. So, we are clear with this, right? Now, we'll be discussing about the first, which is a loose connective tissue. Now, as the word loose is there, we know that there will not be much of the space, right? There will be a little bit of space, but they are not tightly packed together. Yes. Very good. Yes. Rigidity means really very solid. Tamanna. Yes, Divyanshu. We will see that the matrix will differ in some of the connective tissues. Very good, Rashmi. Very good. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So, in the loose connective tissue, we have two types. Everyone, can you see it over here? Solid like rigid. Very good, Aryan. So, we have the aerodol tissue, right? And of course, we have the adipose tissue. These are two important types of uh, loose connective tissues we have. Okay, I hope that it's visible to each one of you. Now, we'll be discussing about the aerodol tissue first and let's look into it. Now, of course, it's a very, very beautiful tissue, right? If, of course, if you can see over here. Now, the aerodol tissue has some of the important things that we have to remember. It has, basically, it's basically it's, it's loosely arranged in the matrix, right, of course. All of this is the matrix, right? And of course, it has lots of fiber into it, okay? Loosely connects, of course, cells have a lot of space between them. Then, of course, it has different types of cells. It's a tissues, right? So, in tissues, we know that there will be different types of cells. Are we clear? Yes, are we clear? Yes, everyone, please tell me, are we clear with this? Very good, very good. So now what we'll be doing, we'll be taking a look over here. Now, so now in this particular tissue, we have different types of cells. So we have macrophages, right? And of course, when we, what do you understand with the terms of macrophages? Basically, this helps in, in the uh, reactions. If there's any invasion, they will be the first one to interact, right? Of course, they provide the protection. So they protect 
protect from the pathogens. Macrophages, they will be attacking the pathogens. Then we have the fibroblast over here. Right, can you see this? A fibroblast basically plays a very important role. First of all, right, it plays a very important role in tissue repair. We are clear, right? Yes, very good, everyone. So, macrophages, of course, they will be fighting. Then, of course, we have, they play a very important role in the tissue repair. They provide the anchorage and the strength. Yes, Prashant, pathogens are the one which are like microorganisms that will be invading our body, attacking our body. We call them as pathogens. Lavanya, kind of. Yes. Yes, Nadasha will be discussing about, uh, we will be discussing about that, but not now. Yes, okay. Now, what are mast cells over here? Can you see? These again, these are the all connective type. Uh, basically, they are present, right? Around, uh, they are present all through our body, but they are not present in the brain and the spinal cord. And they again, plays a very important role in the allergic responses, right? If at all, there's an attack in the body, this allergic response. So, these mast cells will be helping in the reactions. Are we clear, everyone? Yes, Pixie. I just answered your question. Fibers are cell. Hmm, yes. So, of course, there are different types of fibers, right? We will not set them as a cell, but of course, it will be, be produced. Devdas are... Yes, Devdas have just answered this. So, these mast cells are present throughout our body and they play plays a very important role in the allergic responses, right? If there is allergic response, if there is any allergic reaction in the body, they will be in the front line to fight. Okay. Yes, Lavanya, I have answered your question. I hope that you can stop spamming now. Right, so are we clear with this? And of course, in this, we have the matrix and the collagen fiber. This is important, right? Collagen fiber. Now, we know that collagen is a type of protein which is present in the skin, of course, in different parts of the body. And it is more of elastic. Are we clear? Very good, Hemant. Yes, very, very good. Monalisha, they are also present in the aerodal tissue, right? Are we clear, everyone? Yes, my name is Ankita. So, when we talk about the aerodal tissue, just remember. Now, again, all of these are a little bit detailed. We don't have it in our uh, CBSE textbook. But I want all of you to will be more aware about these things. That's why we are discussing it. So, it has different types of cells and each of these cells have a specific function. Now, moving ahead, when we talk about the functions of the loose connective tissue or the aerodal tissue, we have it over here that... It helps in packaging, right? Then, of course, it fills the space that we have inside the organs, support the internal organs, help in the repair, and of course, phagocyte engulf of the foreign particles, right? So, just in case if there's anything which is coming into the body which is kind of outside, these will be playing a very important role in the engulfing them and make sure that they don't harm. Are we clear? Yes. So, when we talk about where it is found, right, so over here we have the location for that. So, we will be able to see the aerial tissue between the skin and the muscles, around the blood vessels, nerves and in the, between the nerves and the bone marrow. Are we clear? So, we, over here we have the location also. Yes, basically it's present between the skin and the muscles and of course they are around the organs. Yes, very, very good everyone. I hope that this is clear to each one of you. The first issue that we have just spoken about is the aerodal tissue, right? Now, of course, it's a loose connective tissue. Yes, and it has different types of cells. We've talked about the functions of these cells, right? And uh, you don't have it in your textbook, textbook, but yeah, you can just have it with you, right? The function and the location. Now, we're moving to the adipose tissue because I saw that many of you are asking about the adipose tissue. So, over here again, we have the adipose tissue, the important characteristic features about the uh, adipose tissues. Yes, Sai and Shivyanshu over here, if you focus, you'll be able to see this. So, they have very specialized oval cell, right? And of course, if you see over here, they have this small nucleus, right? And of course, the majority of it is the fat. 
Now they are filled with the fat globules, right? Very good, Nikita. Very good. And these cells, of course, are called as the adipocytes. Remember the name of the cells, right? These are the very important cells. Now we know this. Now let's talk about the characteristic features of them or the functions of them, right? We know, but are uh, there? And now let's talk about the importance that they have. Now they are present between the skins and the organ, right? So basically they are there or all around the body, right? And they act as a heat insulator. So basically they actually help us in holding the heat in the body. If we don't have the adipose tissue, what will happen? Our, our body will not be able to maintain the temperature also, right? So they act as a heat insulator. Now there are two terms I'm sure all of you are kind of aware of, conductors and insulator. Raise your hands or quickly write in the chat box that how many of you are aware about the conductors and the insulators. <coughs> Very good, Rashmi. Its matrix also contains fibroblasts. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> so what are, what are conductors? They are good, right? They are good conductor of electricity. That means that they will allow the movement of the electricity or the heat through them. Right? Yes, Anshu. The insulator is the one that will not allow the flow of, right? Flow of the heat. So in that way, these will act as an insulator. They are all around our body, right? So they will not allow the heat to pass. And that actually help us in maintaining a temperature, especially during the winter time. So they act as an insulator. And of course, the polar bear have very thick adipose tissue layer. That's why they can survive in the harsh climatic conditions. Yes, everyone, are we clear with this? So, of course, they act as insulator. They reserves the fat. The fats, of course, we say that it's bad, but it's not bad if we have it in the right quantity. Fats are really very important because they store the energy, right? And uh, whenever there's a need, right, these fats will say, oh, I'll give you the energy. Please use, uh, you know, utilize the energy that I have. They act as a shock absorber also, and of course, forms the padding under your skin. Around your kidneys and of course near your eyeballs, especially over here. So are we clear everyone? Yes, about the adipose tissue? Clear, clear, clear? Very good. Awesome. Love to see when you say it's clear. The location of course we already have over here. The shape of the adipose, if you can see over here, they're kind of spherical. Right? Not exactly circular. Over here we have such shape. Mamta, I hope that you got this answer. What is meant by the shock absorber? Basically, they'll be able to absorb the shock. For example, um, wish I can have something over here. Now, I'm sure you must have seen the cushions, right? Cushions that we have. Now, if you are kind of playing, right? And if you have the cushions around you, and if you fall on a bed, right? You'll have that cushion effect. Your head actually get, can protect it from the very harmful injury. That cushion is acting as a shock absorber. So when you fall or something happens, it, it can be easily absorbed. So there's a less damage to the body. Lavanya, I hope that this is clear. Monolisha, the same thing, right? Different layers are being added up. Yeah, kind of make rhyme, yes. Force absorber, yes. Very good. I hope that it's uh, clear. Why around kidneys? Now, of course, if you talk... Um, Shivanshu, right? So if you talk about the kidney's location, it's there at the back over here. Of course, it's a very delicate space, right? I'm sure, I'm sure you can actually feel it's real. It does not have the, you know, special covering from any bones. Lungs are kind of protected with the help of ribs. But over here, we don't have anything. So that's, yeah, kind of there. It's there. Of course, it's all other different organs also. Yes, Chitra, your chart is visible. Ayush, I would not say that. It's not made up of that. We can easily identify them, Ayush. Once you'll be moving ahead and learning in detail about them in your higher classes, you will be able to identify them in different shapes. Mamta, I have answered your question. Awesome. So, are we clear, everyone? So, I think I have answered majority of your doubts. So, we talked about the adrenal tissue and the adipose tissue. Right? So, important things over here to remember, of course, the location and the function. In the examination, these are the two things that will be asked you. Right? The location, what is the location and the function. Awesome! So we are done with that. Let's quickly take a qu look at the question that we have over here. Piyush have answered that question. 
it needs that kind of fat protection, right? It needs that a cushioning effect. Okay, which of the following tissue provides the insulation? Okay, such an easy question, I would say. A, 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 absolutely correct, everyone. The correct answer is the adipose tissue. Very, very good. So, we have discussed about the two important tissues, right? Now, one provides the kind of uh, tissue repair, provides the protection against the invasion of the foreign pathogens. Adipose basically act as a heat insulator and, of course, act as a shock absorber and stores the fat. Now, we are moving to the next part, which is a dense connective tissue. Now, the word dense itself actually explains a lot. Dense means the cells, right, are tightly packed with each other and it's really very important. Now, bones, of course, are the dense, right? Let's talk about them. When we talk about the dense connective tissue, we just not have one. We have four different types over here. We have bone, we have cartilage, we have tendon, and then we have the ligament also. Interesting, right? Yes? Yes, everyone. So, let's quickly break it out and let's quickly discuss about the bone. So, we have over here, right, when we talk about the bone structure, I'm sure you must have seen this. How many of you have, uh, I'm sure, many, maybe few of you must have seen this. Maybe if it's the very first time that you're looking over here. Yes. Now, what are we doing? We're actually taking a look at the structure of the bone. Yes. Now, in our bones, of course, we have the bone marrow. I'm sure you've heard about it. Yes. Bone marrow. I'm sure in the movies, right? You must have heard and talk about, oh, it's really very important. Now, bone marrow, basically, is present inside the bones. Every bones, we have the bone marrow. And they are super capable of making RBCs, WBCs and platelets. So, they're really, really very, very important, right? So, bone marrow, the red bone marrow, helps in the production of the RBCs, WBCs and the platelets. Now, I don't have to tell you why they're really very important. Yes? Very good. Or uh, no, Rashmi? No, 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 no. We will be discussing about that later. Spleen is where, uh, basically, it's called as a graveyard, right, of the RBCs. Okay, I can see you're asking the questions. So, over here, if you can see, we have the pervasion canal right over here. Can you see over here? Yes? So basically, it's a canal that goes and of course, uh, it has, it basically, it's present on the outside of the bone, right? And over here, we have the lamina. Now, in the lamina, we have those circles, right? And inside these circles, we have the bone cells, right? Yes, so bones are porous. I'm sure you must have seen. They're not exactly very smooth, that we say. They have those small, 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 small holes. Not so much, but yeah, a little bit. Very good, very good, right? And of course, we can see the bone marrow over here. Yes, are we clear, everyone? We can see the bone marrow. Very good. Now, over here, we have a very interesting thing. Now, if you take a closer look over here, we have this structure. So, we have the blood vessels. Of course, the bones need the blood, right? So, of course, we have the bone, uh, the blood vessels. We have this canal over here. Now, of course, the canal is there on the outer side. Then, of course, we have the osteocyst. Right? Can you see? These are the bone cells. And over here, we have the canaculules, which are just the lines over here. Now, I want all of you to focus over here. Right? Where I want, I want you to focus on the word, which is important, which is the osteocytes. For us, this is really important. Right? Bone cells. Are we clear, everyone? Yes, are we clear? So, quickly take a screenshot of it, right? Quickly take a screenshot of it. I'm sure you'll be able to take the screenshot of others also. But this is important. Very good. Done. So, important again, a very... Now, I know that there are a lot of things that we have over here. Yes? Right? There are a lot of important things over here. Now, so now let's go back over there and let's understand what we have in the structure. Now, if you look over here, right, the lamina. Yes, if you take a closer look, 
it has no circles this circles right and if you take a closer look this is how it will look ji a lamina is basically the space right that is there and over here we have these concentric circles that have the blood vessels and that has the bone cells right now over here we have this canaculules right and of course we have the ostiosis which are the important cells now i don't want you to go into the details of the structure because we don't have it in much in our cbsc but it's just good to understand about it ji i have answered your question very good so then let's talk about the bone as a characteristic features made up of the ostiosis right then embedded in the hard matrix and of course it has the salts salts of the phos uh, phosphorus right and the carbonate calcium very good shivansh yes thank you for helping your friends okay ramesh pith is there in the plant so you, you need to go back there and you need to study that you can quickly go through that session okay now we have the salts of the phosphorus and the carbonate calcium that actually make the uh, basically the bone structure all together right and of course it's really very strong and it's non flexible right we know that it's not flexible very good yes nice very good very good are we clear with this okay i'll give you a time out right i'll give you a, a time to ask the doubts but just hear me out now are we clear with this right as of now very good everyone so when we talk about the functions of the bone we know that it forms the skeleton framework it will provide the anchorage to the muscles protect the internal organ give us a very strong framework help in the locomotion and give rise to the blood cells all together right of course we can move we can do all sort of things when we have this yes i will repeat and radha just give me a moment very good so we are clear with this right let's quickly take this question and then we will uh, go back and revise right we will have a doubt board and then we'll talk so we have skeletal muscles are attached to now of course we know that these are the muscles that will be getting attached and will actually help in the locomotion fuse locomotion means a movement right locomotion yes very good everyone that's a correct answer that is the bones that we have is the bones okay are we clear very good very good so we are done with the bones now we will discuss about the cartilage and then we'll come back on the doubts are we clear rashmi i will answer your question first let's quickly discuss about the cartilage and then we'll come back and then we will discuss about the uh, cartilage sai i know it's these are the tendons but we are trying to talk about these muscles right are attached to bones in general when we are talking muscle to bone right are we clear very good very good so let's quickly discuss about the cartilage now of course a cartilage another is another type of the dense connective tissue now when we talk about its matrix it's more dense right can you see the matrix over here everyone right see this is a plot the substance right on to which we have the cells now the cells that actually help in the formation of the cartilage are called as the chondrocyte yes very good yes so we have this now the matrix of the cartilage is really very really dense right and it, it is elastic also so we can say it is elastic also right and of course it has a very special types of cells and the name of these cells are the chondrocyte right and they are the one that will be producing the yes yeah i will i will yes are we clear with this nice so we are kind of clear with the structure now let's talk about the characteristic features yeah it's right let's talk about the characteristic features of it so they are widely spaced right 
matrix of protein and sugar. So, of course, in the matrix, they have the sugar and the protein. So, over here, right, they will have and they are soft and elastic tissue. Yes, Shivanshu, you can just collect your doubts. We will have uh, the doubt uh, board and then we will discuss about it. So, the cartilage basically, again, is a type of dense connective tissue, right? And it, ha it has a very special type of cells, which is the chondrocytes. It's, it is soft and elastic in nature, right? And the matrix that it has is made up of the proteins and the sugar. Now, let's go back over there and let's talk about the location and the functions of it. So, the function of the cartilage is to provide the flexibility in the joints. And of course, it's smooth in the bone surface. Now, if you, uh, if you look over here, between the bones, right, between the two big bones, we have a cartilage. Now, this, base, this particular cartilage actually helps in making sure that bones are not rubbing onto each other, right, and it acts as a basically an oiling medium. I'm sure you must have seen, right, your parents will be adding oil to the machines. Yes or no? Yes? I'm sure you must have seen, right? Okay, I can't see the chat. Yes, yes, now I can see. Very good, yes. So yeah, we have seen this, right? So similarly, similarly, we have this cartilage, which is present between the two bones. And it acts as a layer, right? And make sure that the bones are not rubbing. It will not be damaging the bones, right? It basically helps in protecting the bones and provide a fluid between them. So, over here, yes, let me talk about the functions of it. They are present in the nose, ears, the trachea and of course in the larynx. Okay, we can do like this, right? Da, 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 da. I hope you can do this, right? Yes, over here, so we have the, uh, we have the nose. Right, of course, there in the ear also and in the trachea also. Very good. Are we clear? Fuse, they are the bone cells. Are we clear? Yes. Awesome. Now, let's quickly discuss about the doubts that you had, right? Now, I think many of you have a lot of doubts regarding the bones. In next, okay, I need to finish off the session. Yes. Very good, everyone. Very good. So, let's go back over there, right? Okay, let's just stay over here and we'll be able to take care of it. So when we talk in terms of the uh, in terms of the bones, right? They have the bone cells, which are the osteocytes. Osteocytes, right? They actually help in uh, the production. Bone marrow cells. Bones basically is really very really rigid and provide a structure to us. Ayush, basically, it's something which actually come back. Thank you, Ayush, for helping Anshu. Yes. So we have that right. Are we clear everyone with this? Hi, good evening everyone. Yes. Like you know. Basically we talk, when you talk about the structure right, when we are looking at the structures over there which are near the cells right, basically that's a space filled with the fluid and that is called as. Rashmi, I hope that it's clear. Right? Rashmi, I hope that you got the answer. <coughs> yes, everyone, I hope that all of you are clear. Very good. Cartilage is living or live? You need to tell me. Cartilage is really, really special. There are very special characteristics about them. Yes, they don't have the blood supply, right? They don't have the blood supply with them. Yes, so Rashmi, basically when we talk about them, right? We, you remember we saw the structure, the rings right over here. And of course, these rings have those space which are kind of fluid. They have a lot of uh, fluid filled space. And that space is called azelaclin. Very good. 
Of course, you guys have went to the uh, tendons and the uh, ligaments. So let's quickly discuss about that. Here we have a very quick answer that bones actually makes about 15 to 16 percentage of your body mass. Interesting, right? Interesting question. And apart from that, let's quickly discuss a question. The hard matrix of the bone contains dash and dash only. What do you think? Yes. Quickly tell me everyone. The matrix of the bones contain dash and dash. Calcium, phosphorus, both A and B of the potassium. Salts of, right? What are the salts of? Very good. The correct answer is option number C, both A and B. Very good. With this, we are kind of done with the dense connective tissue, right? The dense connective tissue have the cartilage and the bone. There are two more. We'll just quickly discuss about them, right? We have the cartilage and the bone, right? When you talk about the cartilage, firm but elastic. Bones are firm and brittle, but really tough. Made up of the protein and the sugar matrix that has the calcium and the phosphate. Then, of course, lacks blood supply, have proper blood supply. And sorry, uh, with this, right? Now, can you quickly think of an idea that why cartilage has the, uh, does not lack no blood vessels? So, Rashmi, uh, the difference, the main difference between these two would be that it is specifically present, right? In the uh, in the bone specific area, right in the it basically a part of the bone matrix. Sorry, yeah, in that particular area it is there. Brittle means it's really very really tough, right? Now in terms, of, if you talk in terms of the uh, you know, it's not very elastic. It's really very really rigid. Okay, I didn't get your question, uh, Shivansh, but why? Okay. Yes, very good. So it lacks the cartilage, lacks the blood supply, but still it gets the nutrient by the simple process of diffusion, right? And of course, it gets the nutrient from the surrounding parts. So I think with this, I need to wind up the session. We will be continuing the session a later part, right? Need to finish this session uh, now. We'll be discussing about, just give me a minute. Do we have time? It's, it's fine, right? You have time. Huh. So let's quickly discuss it, everyone. Yes, let's quickly discuss about the easy part. Now the tough part is over. We are discussing about the dense connective tissue, the tendon. Now, of course, tendon is really very special. Now, I'm sure you can tell me that the tendon joins the... Yes, it joins the muscle. Sorry. Muscle to bone. Right? TMB. Tendon basically will help in joining the muscle to bone. Muscle to bone, remember this everyone. Yes, one, that's what they say. We'll have Rashmi for sure. I understand it's a very big session, right? We'll have a sessions on this for sure. Are we clear? BTM, bone, tendon, muscle. Yeah, th this also works. Okay, so basically it actually helps in joining the uh, muscle to the bone, right? It's a type of a dense connective tissue. It has lots of collagen. Then we have the ligament, which of course helps in joining the, what it helps? Ligament helps in joining the two bones. So, LBB, LBB, BBL, right? Bone to bone. And the difference, like it's a very common question asking the difference. So you can remember this, right? We have the tendon and the ligament. So of course, joint skeleton to bone, right? Sorry, muscle to bone, right? And then of course, joint bone to bone, right? Of course, it's more sturdier than the ligament and it is elastic. So of course, when we talk in terms of, I'm sure uh, you must have heard about, um, right? I'm sure you must have heard about the ligament here. Right, sometimes what happens uh, if there's a small little bit of the injury, the ligament might get tear up, right? And that's why uh, we'll have the pain. But slowly, slowly, the, the ligament can actually heal, right? And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll not have that pain. Yes, very good. So we are clear with this also, right? 
ligament and tendon. So very quick question, which of the following does not have a blood supply? It's a very easy question. You can quickly answer this question. Mamta, even I had a, a little bit minute injury uh, on my leg with the ligament. I didn't do anything. I'm sure you must be must you I'm sure you you must I'm sure you did something. Okay. Very good, everyone. The correct answer is the cartilage. And with that, we are kind of done with the two different types of tissues. The last one we have is the fluid connective tissue, and the fluid connective tissue is the blood. Now I want just your five minutes, just five minutes, everyone. Right? It's the easiest topic. We have been learning about it for a long time, the blood. Right? So let's quickly revise it. So we have the blood, which is a fluid connective tissue. It has two important components as per se. It has the matrix, right? The plasma, right? The fluid component that we have is a non-cellular one that is a plasma. And then of course, we have the cells, which is RBCs, WBCs and platelets. Yes, Rashmi, me too. It's the easiest one. So the plasma make 50%, 55% of the blood, right? And rest, what we have is distributed um, um, amongst the RBCs, WBCs and the platelets. So, among that also, it's basically a fluid, right? So, what is a plasma? Right? It basically, it's not a fluid, uh, it's not a very solid thing. It's not a cell. It's a fluid, yellowish in color. And it is 90% of the water and it contains ions, proteins, hormones, nutrient and waste. So basically when it moves, it actually helps in the transportation also and removal of also of few things. Are we clear? Yes, Raj, uh, tissues are made when the different types of cells will come together. Piyush will not have the second part of this video, but we might have a very uh, important doubt session for the connective tissue. R right, are we clear with the compositions of the it? Now let's talk about the function. The function of the uh, blood plasma is that it actually help in the transport and distribution of nutrient and removal of the waste products. Yes, Nikita. In components, we have nutrient, different types of gases, hormones, ions. I think red blood corpuscles does not contain any sort of... Yes, Ayush, you are absolutely correct. Now let's talk about the other cellular component, which is the R, uh, WBCs or RBCs and the platelets. So first we are discussing about red blood cells, right? Now of course they have a biconcave shape and they are red in color because of the pigment which is hemoglobin. I'm sure you are aware about it, right? Hemoglobin is a protein, right? And it's a pigment which gives red color to the blood and of course it is a one that actually help in carrying the oxygen also. Very good everyone. Very good. Right? It actually helps in the transportation of oxygen molecule. Then comes our WBCs, right? So the special cells that we have in our body are WBCs or white blood cells, the soldier cells. They are the ones that will be fighting against any of the harmful microorganisms that enter into our body. Right? Saurav sir is here. I need to leave. Please sir, please come. Just two minutes. So, they will be the one that will be fighting against the antigens, right? For example, if there is an invasion of the microorganisms. So, these WBCs will be attacking the microorganisms and will be taking a care of our body. Very good, yes. RBCs are very small, right? They are very tiny. WBCs are a little bit bigger than them. Very good, very good. And the last one are the amazing platelets. Now, they are the one that actually help in the clotting of the blood. I'm sure if you get a tear over here, if there's a cut, after some time, the blood will not ooze out, right? So there the platelets will come and they'll form a mesh-like structure. And they will hold the blood cells. This is for class 9th. Very good. So, now that we are done with this, let's quickly discuss about the important characteristic features of the blood. Of course, they are bright in color, flow in the blood vessels. Matrix is known as plasma. Have WBCs, RBCs and platelets, right? Plasma consists of a protein, salt and hormones. And talk about the functions of it. So it helps in the transportation of the nutrient, 
carrying of the removal of the excess harmful gases, elimination, health and clotting and so on. Yes. Are we clear everyone with this? Yes. Uh, WBCs are present in our body. Prashant, we have millions of them. Right? So many are there. And there are five different types. You will be learning about them in the higher classes. Awesome. All my bachas. So we are done. Last question for all of us. Which of the following is not a, non, not a cellular component of the blood? So in blood, we have two important components. Cellular and non-cellular. Cellular means, of course, they, are, they have the cells. Non-cellular means the fluid, right? The plasma is the answer. Very good. Okay. So here we have the answer that is plasma. Very good. A, 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 A. And with this, we are done with our today's session. Now, I know that we want to have the, the discussion of the doubts. But I'm really sorry. We are a little bit short of time. Saurav sir has a class at 5 and I need to leave from here. So, I would request you to write your doubts in the comment section below, right? And we'll be picking up your doubts. Clear? Right? With that, everyone, we will finish our class. Very quick recap. You can take a screenshot of it. Yes. And with that, we are done. Here's a homework question for all of you. Why bone doesn't have a supply, uh, blood supply and cartilage doesn't? You can answer this question and write the answer in the comment section below. You know that we have got you covered and don't forget to hit the, hit the like button for the video. Subscribe to the channel. It means a lot when you subscribe, right? It just, it just tells us that we are doing something good and all of you supports us in that. Thank you, Nikita. Thank you so much. And share with your friends. With that, everyone, I'll say bye-bye. I want to talk to you, but less time. We'll be having this conversation later. Yes. Devdas, I'm sure the team is working on that and they'll be able to help you with that. Bye-bye, everyone. Lots of love and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.